Good morning and thanks for joining us. We are going to be sending you to the governor's press conference in just a bit. Looks like he's currently now at the podium. Pair of remarks. Obviously, we have a very unique situation with two storms. Uh, that are unfortunately headed towards Louisiana. Uh, we do expect impact here uh, and that within 48 hours of one another. So uh, the temporal proximity and the geographic proximity uh, of these storms uh, pose a challenge that quite frankly we've not seen before. Uh, and as a result, we don't know exactly what to expect and I guess you never know um, exactly what to expect, but, but uh, this, is, this is a very serious situation. Uh, the people of, of Louisiana certainly need to be prepared for Marco, which as of now is a hurricane. Uh, that's a, a new update from the National Weather Service. Uh, Marco has been upgraded to a uh, Category 1 hurricane. We expect it to be a Category 1 upon uh, making landfall in Louisiana. Uh, impacts will begin um, uh, really overnight with tropical storm force winds uh, in uh, southeast Louisiana. Uh, less than uh, 48 hours later, we are expecting Laura to make uh, landfall. Uh, and, and all across south Louisiana, as it moves from east to west, there will be impacts uh, pre-landfall uh, from Laura. Uh, we're going to give you a lot of information today, and you probably have been watching your um, local news and, and the National Weather Service and, and so forth, uh, but I want to be very clear at the outset. Uh, these storms are not to be taken lightly, especially because they, there are two of them um, and they're going to impact so much of South Louisiana uh, so close together. You should be taking uh, today uh, and making sure that you and your family are fully prepared uh, and that wherever you are at dark tonight, uh, when it gets dark is where you need to be prepared to ride out uh, these storms. So, uh, and I do want to repeat that. Uh, you need to be prepared to ride out the storms, you and your family, wherever you are at dark tonight. And that is because tropical storm force winds will be impacting coastal Louisiana before daylight uh, tomorrow. Uh, I know that you've, you've heard that frequently, but with this one-two punch, um, that, that what we're expecting. Uh, this is a situation where you really need to be prepared, uh, as we've always told you, uh, to ride out these storms and, and the first 72 hours is on you. Um, and that is because uh, the second storm comes in so close that there may not be much of a window uh, when we can fly search and rescue uh, helicopters, uh, when we can get out uh, with high water vehicles um, and th those sorts of things. And, and by the way, it's going to be very difficult uh, if there's power outages, and there likely will be, uh, for uh, the restoration of power to occur uh, between the two storms as well. So, so we really are uh, asking you to focus on those 72 hours um, and, and uh, that, that you and your family are positioned where you need to be uh, and that you can you can uh, ride out the storm for those 72 hours of the storms, I should say. Uh, I just received the latest update from the National Weather Service, uh, and joining me today from Weather Service is meteorologist in charge, uh, Benjamin Schott, and he's going to explain in detail uh, how things are unfolding. Um, in addition, we have uh, Keith Waddell, General, uh, Brigadier General with the Louisiana National Guard, and as I mentioned, we have a uh, House Speaker, uh, Section Leader, uh, Senate President Cortez, uh, and also Ch uh, Chip Klein, uh, Chairman of, of the CPRA. Uh, so at this time, I'm going to invite Ben to come up and, and make a, a presentation and ask everyone to pay particular attention uh, to, to this forecast that he's going to give us. Uh, good morning, everyone. I want to thank uh, the governor for inviting us at the National Weather Service uh, to this briefing. Uh, we have, like he mentioned, a, a one-two punch that's going to uh, hit the state of Louisiana. So I want to uh, elaborate a little bit on the threats of each of the storms, some of the timing, and some of the things that we'll be facing as we see both Hurricane Marco and right now what is forecasted to be Hurricane Laura uh, later this week. 
Uh, Marco, uh, as the governor has mentioned, has now been designated as a hurricane. Uh, it will continue to move across the Gulf of Mexico over the course of today, and we'll see the impacts reaching the Louisiana coast sometime during the early morning hours and into the daytime of tomorrow. When it reaches uh, close to the mouth of the Mississippi, it will take a slight jog to the west, but uh, at the same time, it will also start to diminish slightly. Though, with that being the case, I think the number one thing when it comes to Marco is not to get uh, so fixated on the category. Uh, we always hear the phrase, it's just a category one. Unfortunately, uh, category one hurricanes uh, still put a lot of people uh, at risk to not only lose property, but also their lives. And so with this storm, though the winds may not be the greatest threat, there will be a significant threat when it comes to the rainfall. Uh, and southeast Louisiana has a good risk for significant amounts of rainfall, which can create flash flooding and dangerous conditions for anyone who may be trying to travel uh, through this storm as it makes landfall. Uh, also, as Marco becomes on shore, uh, there will be issues with uh, coastal flooding and with storm surge. Uh, there will be a continuous uh, flow of water into areas across coastal Louisiana, which will just enhance the coastal flooding even beyond Marco's reach and into Laura's reach later on in the week, which I'll elaborate a little bit more as I talk about Laura next. The storm surge uh, for most of the area from the west bank of the Mississippi and to the west uh, will be somewhere in the three to six foot range with maybe some local higher amounts. And as you move to the uh, east bank and across uh, up towards Lake Pontchartrain, uh, those areas could see three to six and inside the lake two to four. Um, these are enough to cause issues. And uh, for folks who have interests along the coast, uh, they need to make sure, like the governor said, that they're taking action now. That window is closing quickly. Uh, also, with uh, Marco, there is the usual threat of isolated tornadoes, uh, but those will be a little bit more widespread than what would be through a normal severe weather event. So that window with Marco moving out of the area will start to happen on Tuesday. It will be a slow move as it transits across the state and moves towards the Texas line. So it will not approach the state of Texas until roughly Tuesday evening. At the same time this is occurring, uh, what should be at that point uh, Hurricane Laura will be working its way towards the state. And the first impacts for it may be seen as early as late Tuesday night uh, along the southern coast of Louisiana. Uh, with it, it may have a pretty significant wind punch because we are talking right now forecasting a Category 2 hurricane. Uh, the storm surge along uh, southern Louisiana could be as high as 7 to 10 feet, if not a little bit higher in some spots, depending on the exact track as it moves in, uh, into the state. Uh, as you get uh, a little bit further to the east of the mouth of Mississippi, there will still be some uh, storm surge there. It will be lesser but those interests there will still see that coastal flooding that I mentioned before, because at this point, we would have had three or four days of winds pushing that water inland. And so a lot of places that see significant flooding in these situations will only be compounded by the second storm surge and the second wave of water that will be coming in with Laura. With Laura, there will be also the possibility of heavy rainfall. Uh, both events could see five to 10 inches with localized amounts of 15. And it is possible that some places, especially in the, in the south central portions of the state, may see bands that overlap each other from both storms. And so therefore, it is possible that there could be some spots within the state that will be measuring rainfall in one to two feet instead of in just uh, inches. So there are significant uh, impacts from these storms that go beyond the wind. And I think water is the one that we need to respect the most whether it be uh, at the coast with the surge or coastal flooding, or better, whether it be inland with the heavy rain and flash flooding, all of this can destroy property and take people's lives. And now is definitely the time for folks to finish those last preparations uh, as we have the one-two punch come in. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ben, appreciate that. And we started having unified command group meetings on Friday as it relates to, to these storms. 
Uh, we did declare a statewide emergency, uh, issued that declaration on Friday. Yesterday, we requested a federal disaster declaration, um, and that is pending uh, at the White House with the President as we speak. Uh, the Governor's Office of Homeland Security and Emergency Preparedness has activated its Emergency Operations Center, uh, which is now operating 24 hours a day and will until further notice. Uh, GOSEP has processed a number of requests for support from parishes uh, involving items such as super sacks, sandbags, pumps, uh, generators, and so forth. And the crisis action team uh, will continue uh, to process these requests and, and others that we receive uh, throughout uh, these two storms. At this time, um, and this is changing every few minutes, but 17 parishes have issued parish emergency declarations. Another 17 or so are in the process of, of doing that, uh, and we will expect more uh, to follow. CPRA is monitoring a total of 689 gates, uh, both along the river and across the coast. As of this morning, 194 gates are closed. Uh, CPRA continues to provide modeling data uh, for gate closures to all levy districts and parishes, and we'll be sharing um, that modeling with uh, the parishes uh, in a call later this afternoon. Uh, as you all can imagine, we, we have not yet uh, before this uh, uh, week had an occasion to need to model two storms coming in in close proximity like this and, and look, trying to figure out what that storm surge is going to be uh, is very difficult. But as Ben just told you, the primary threat from these hurricanes, and look, we have to take it all seriously. The wind uh, is certainly a hazard. Uh, can spin off tornadoes, uh, but this is primarily going to be a water event, both because of the storm surge uh, and the flooding, because of rainfall and, and river flooding. And all of that is related because the rivers can't discharge and empty and drain so long as the storm surge is building up and that southeast wind continues. Uh, and if those bands from one or more of those uh, storms have set up and become stationary over the same area, you know that there's going to be a heavy uh, rainfall. So th this is primarily going to be a water event and, and trying to figure out what that storm surge is going to be is tough. But what we know is uh, there's going to be storm surge from Marco. We know that that water is not going to recede hardly at all before uh, Laura hits. Uh, and so we've, we've not seen this before and that's why people need to be paying particular attention. Uh, in Grand Isle, the CPRA has provided and funded super sacks that are being deployed by the National Guard along the Gulf side to protect uh, the levee. Also provided two 500 kW generators that have been delivered uh, and additional pumps are being sent to Grand Isle today. In Plaquemines Parish, crews are dredging the Empire Lock so that that structure, I'm sorry, that structure uh, can be closed. In St. Bernard Parish, uh, 3,000 3, field sandbags were delivered by Slipa East and 25,000 sandbags were delivered uh, by the Corps of Engineers. Uh, these sandbags will be deployed in areas outside of the hurricane risk reduction system uh, like Wood Lake, Delacro, um, and, and other areas. Three pumps were delivered yesterday and another three will be delivered to St. Bernard today. Uh, the National Guard is pre-positioning uh, its personnel and assets, including high water vehicles across southern Louisiana, uh, and, and they are uh, continuing to uh, position super sack sandbags, generators, and so forth. Um, and obviously, they're, they're delivering uh, those assets uh, across south Louisiana. There are currently 1,800 guardsmen on drill duty who are ready to provide support. Uh, we have received uh, from FEMA, and we want to thank them now. Uh, we've got John Long, uh, who is a FEMA representative who's been embedded with us for many weeks now uh, because of the COVID pandemic, but also we've been in constant communication with Region 6 Administrator Tony Robinson uh, and Administrator Gaynor, Gaynor from uh, FEMA has been uh, talking to um, General Jim Wascom as well, but they positioned two APACs. Um, and, and those, they each contain 100,000 MREs and 250,000 uh, bottles of water that we have in Louisiana. One of those is in Roseland. The other uh, is either at or soon will be uh, at uh, Camp Beauregard. Of course, the COVID-19 pandemic is still with us. Um, that complicates uh, the preparations for and response to 
the hurricanes as well. Everybody needs to keep that in mind as you prepare your emergency kits and make preparations to protect yourselves and your families, your businesses, your pets. Uh, we still have to practice mitigation measures to keep each other safe, especially if uh, we're going to be coming into more contact with one another uh, for extended periods of time. In addition to the traditional emergency items, your kit sh should contain masks or face cover coverings, uh, two per person if possible, hand sanitizer, uh, disinfectant wipes and sprays if available. Um, and remember, we are encouraging everyone over the age of two, if possible, uh, to, to wear a, a mask unless you have some uh, medical condition that, that prevents that. COVID testing will pause on Monday and Tuesday uh, in terms of our community-based testing sites that we've been administering across the state of Louisiana, um, likely because of the, the way these storms are, are positioned now and the forecast that those closures may continue uh, for additional days in the week, we will keep you updated um, because obviously testing is incredibly important and we want people to be tested uh, as soon as possible. Certainly if you're symptomatic or if you've been exposed to someone uh, with COVID. Uh, the Department of Health did update the numbers uh, a few moments ago. I'll share those with you. And before I do, remember we didn't report on Saturday. So these, these are the numbers for both Saturday uh, and Sunday. The last time we reported was Friday. Uh, sadly, we're reporting 59 new deaths today, uh, COVID-19, um, and we are reporting 1,200 new cases of COVID-19. Again, those are for two days. Um, the good news we have is that hospitalizations, COVID-19 around the state are down to 941. That's 109 below the number that we've reported on Friday. Um, and uh, we are also reporting that 152 of the 941 uh, are on mechanical ventilators. <clears throat> this is an important reminder when it comes to sheltering uh, in place. We still have a lot of COVID-19 uh, in Louisiana, tens of thousands of cases uh, across the state, um, and as many as half of which are completely asymptomatic. And so that, that makes this a very difficult emergency to manage without having the natural disaster on top of it. Uh, so please protect yourselves and your family against COVID to the maximum degree possible. And all of the mitigation measures we've been talking about uh, are those that we have to follow now. It's just that they're even more important. Uh, so wearing your mask, uh, physical distancing, washing uh, your hands and, and so forth, incredibly important. But because of safety concerns associated with the pandemic, uh, congregant sheltering will be a last resort uh, for people who, who need to evacuate and, and need shelter. Um, and right now there are a few mandatory evacuations that are in place. Uh, and this is one of the reasons we need everybody paying attention to the local government because they will be the ones announcing evacuations, whether they're voluntary or mandatory. And I suspect those numbers, uh, uh, the the areas that are going to be under evacuation orders will increase over the next uh, several hours. But right now, mandatory evacuations are in place for East and West Bank of Plaquemines Parish, uh, Golden Meadow in Lafouche, and Grand Isle uh, in Jefferson Parish. For those who must evacuate, uh, this is what you need to do now. Plan to stay with family or friends or make hotel or motel reservations in a safer area. If you can't avoid sheltering in place with people outside of your household, uh, you should. If you have to shelter in place with others, uh, remember, uh, even if they're relatives and close friends and so forth, the virus doesn't know that. Um, and so try to stay cohorted by a household as much as you can uh, and physically distant. Wear masks, even, even in the home. Uh, that's incredibly important. If you do not have these options and need transportation, you should contact your Office of Emergency Preparedness. Uh, you can find contact information under contacts at getagameplan.org. Everyone uh, should, as I mentioned before, uh, make plans, be prepared uh, for the first 72 hours. Obviously, if you're in duress uh, and need help, we're going to get to you as soon as possible. But as soon as possible, maybe longer than it ordinarily is because we got the second storm coming in so soon behind the first one. 
uh, and, and with uh, tropical storm winds that are going to be impacting the same areas of Louisiana. Um, I can tell you that uh, today we've had approximately 500 inmates from Plaquemines Parish uh, Jail uh, that are being evacuated to a facility uh, well north of, of I-10. The Department of Corrections is in constant contact with the Sheriff's Association uh, and local sheriffs in high-risk areas uh, in case evacuations uh, do become necessary. Uh, the Department of Corrections started coordinating with the Sheriff's Association on Thursday uh, for possible evacuations. Um, and of course, they have at the Department of Corrections adequate uh, PPE for uh, all the, to, so that they can take all the necessary precautions uh, on inmate movements as it relates to protecting uh, the inmates and, and others who are, are working those evacuations. In preparations for the storms, the Department of Corrections has more than 20,000 filled sandbags on hand. Um, at state prisons, and the department has uh, sand and more than 70,000 empty sandbags that are ready to be filled by inmates upon request from local OEPs. Probation and parole agents are assisting with evacuations and hospital security for inmates who may be in the hospital for medical needs. Uh, pardon and parole board hearings for the week of August 24th, 28th uh, through the 28th, I should say, are canceled. All state offices uh, in South Louisiana on the North Shore will be closed tomorrow, Monday. Uh, closures uh, extending beyond Monday are likely across much of, of Louisiana, especially South Louisiana, but those will be announced later. And there will be official announcement uh, by agency uh, later today on these office closures. Uh, we do know a lot of people are concerned about food right now. Um, and uh, if we meet the federal disaster criteria for a DSNAP program, uh, we will certainly make that request and put it into uh, motion. Uh, obviously, it's, it's too early to know whether we're going to meet those criteria. Um, DOTD staff are on alert and have mobilized their high water signs, barricades, and other equipment that may be needed to address issues related to the storm. All tolls have been removed on the LA-1 bridge as well as all collections on the Cameron Ferry. Uh, we will monitor, determine how long those collections will be suspended and how long the ferry uh, will operate. Debris contractors and monitors have been notified and we are coordinating with them. Uh, task Force bus has been uh, activated. Now this is the program where we activate school buses. Uh, we've actually uh, identified 91 uh, school buses and we've begun staging the first 40 of those. Uh, they were split in the southeast and southwest um, and I know the southeast staging site uh, will be Lamar Dixon, and we're trying to figure out exactly how many will go uh, to Lamar Dixon and how many will go to the Lafayette area. And we, again, thank the National Guard because they will be providing the licensed drivers uh, for these school buses. We also have um, activated a contract with a coach bus contractor. Uh, I believe it's 110 buses. Uh, coach buses that will be positioned in Louisiana by dark uh, tonight. Obviously, we're hopeful that we won't have to use uh, these buses, um, and if we do, there are complications because you can put fewer people on a bus now than you can if it's not a COVID environment. Um, we are encouraging everyone to use 511LA.org or the 511LA app to see what state routes are open or closed. Uh, many routes are closed ordinarily because of maintenance, but it, as uh, high water uh, becomes uh, an issue, you will see more uh, roads closed. And you can get real-time information at 511LA.org. Um, and what we know in, in storms like this is most uh, people who, who um, die from these storms die because of water. And in many cases, that's with people driving. Uh, and they know that the road is underwater. They don't know how deep it is. They assume it's going to be safe to cross, uh, and ultimately it proves not to be the case. So I'm going to encourage everyone, please make sure that you don't do that. If you don't absolutely know for certain that it's safe, uh, don't cross standing water. Quite often there's current that is imperceptible to you while you're in the road, but it doesn't take much current to wash your vehicle off the road and sometimes into much uh, deeper water. So please be careful uh, with that. Uh, this situation remains somewhat fluid. Uh, the forecasts are changing a little bit. Um, we, we think we have a pretty good read on Marco. 
Um, the Laura coming behind it uh, will, will change a little bit in all likelihood, uh, but we're going to give one more press conference update today at 6 o'clock, uh, which will follow the, the afternoon update from the National uh, Weather Service, and we'll have more information uh, not just on the weather but on uh, our preparations across the state of Louisiana. Um, and we'll have updates on closures of, of state agencies and, and, and so forth if that actually changes between now and then. So with that, um, I'm going to uh, take your questions and, and you can feel free to ask me a question, Ben, and really any of the individuals that, that you see up here. Yes, sir, Greg. Governor, how will these storms impact your decision on whether or not to extend your order, which you would generally have decided to announce on Tuesday? Mm -hmm. um, don't, don't know yet. Obviously, we have um, um, the same people that, that are work the, the COVID emergency are working um, the two hurricanes as well. Um, and, and so we, we just don't know. And, and I haven't yet had that gating criteria meeting. It was scheduled for tomorrow afternoon. Um, and, and the other thing you have to try to figure out is, is at the end of this process, um, I hope we don't have to do congregate sheltering, but if we do, um, to what degree have we done that? How many people have we brought into contact with one another? And so we, we've got a whole new set of, of things that we have to think about, uh, and, and I'll, I'll have more information for you either to, tonight or tomorrow morning about what that new timeline looks like. We know the current proclamation expires on Friday. Um, there will be a new one in its place. I don't, I don't yet know uh, exactly what the timeline is going to look like in terms of making and announcing a decision on that, and I, I would just ask that, that people bear with us on it. Yes, sir, Sam? Still moving forward with congregate sheltering when it could be buying out hotels to put people in? Um, well, first of all, we are, we are hopeful that we're not going to have to do um, um, a, a lot of sheltering. If we do have to open congregate sheltering, we will. Uh, as we've been uh, telling you all for months now, we've been coordinating with FEMA uh, with the idea that we would, in fact, use motels and hotels, which, which have a lot, a lot of vacancy, uh, before we would do um, mass sheltering. Uh, so that is not just an option for us. It's something that we've actually started coordinating months ago to get pre-approval for that concept. Um, and uh, General Wascom, I don't know if you want to come up and, and, and brief that. Yeah, uh, Sam, we have uh, been in con uh, consultation with FEMA. We've, we've talked about the uh, non-congregate sheltering. Uh, the emergency declaration that is with the president right now requests to turn that on if need be. So we can use uh, the hotels for non-congregate uh, sheltering once that's approved. Uh, again, for a Cat 1 storm like this, uh, those areas outside the protected levee system. Obviously, we're going to have storm surge. Th those people are, are being asked to get out, uh, as you saw from the evacuations. So uh, normally for a Category 1 storm, Category 2 storm, uh, we don't have mass uh, evacuations from the coast like we would for a Cat 3 or higher. So uh, we are looking at that. Um, obviously, uh, the, if the need should arise, if we do have to go into congregate sheltering and use it, we are prepared to segregate by families. There will be protocols in place for thermometers there. There will be PPE at those shelters, uh, and there will be ways to, to isolate uh, cohorts and families that come in. So we're looking at all those factors uh, to, to, to get at this uh, the sheltering piece. Hey, uh, along with that note, um, can you kind of tell us what that will look like? If we are put in that situation, we need congregate shelters? Well, sure. Like I said, the, if the locals uh, open up a, a congregate shelter, they will have personnel staged there, support staff. They will be there with thermometers. They will have PPE for the folks that come in. They will be spaced. We will not have the usual capacity we have for congregate sheltering. Um, and so th those are the things that we, we – take into account if we should have to go to congregate sheltering. Obviously, the, the, the numbers that we could put in a shelter are going to be diminished because of the spacing. Uh, some of these shelters, 
Uh, for instance, in our state shelters, we have some of the tenage that we've had in the Morial Convention Center that we've set up where we can cohort families uh, and the like when they come in. So uh, where we can, we'll, we'll do that as well. Yeah, great. But, but no, no shelters, you're preparing for that, but none have been opened. No, sir. You have not seen anybody yet. That's correct. Sam. I have a question for uh, Mr. Shaw. Um, could you talk about this? So uh, it looks like Category 1 for Marco and forecast and Category 2 for Laura. Is that more or less the ceiling for these storms in terms of their intensity? Uh, I would say for Marco, yes. Uh, you know, there are some limiting factors um, that could keep uh, Marco from developing any further beyond uh, Category 1. Uh, there is the uncertainty of actually how far uh, Laura will develop. Um, right now, the National Hurricane Center and, and working with us, and uh, you know, they have some amazing forecasters there. They uh, they are seeing what uh, from the modeling that right now a Category Two looks like the most likely scenario for Laura. Um, but there is some modeling that shows it both uh, stronger than that and, and weaker than that. Um, and so, the, the important part with Laura as we move forward is watching what happens after it comes off of Cuba. Uh, because at that point it will enter into the open waters of the Gulf of Mexico and then it will have the entire transit across the Gulf of Mexico and above normal sea surface temperatures and an environment uh, that will allow it to continue to develop, which is why we see it going from um, a, a strong tropical storm to a Category 2 hurricane before it reaches the coast. So the, yes, to answer your question in, in a little bit more succinctly, um, uh, Laura is the one that would have uh, the possibility to be a little bit stronger than what is currently forecast. Marco right now, I doubt, will have any surprises for us between now and when it reaches the coast tomorrow. So can you say where you think Marco now, not precisely, but it's very, very close to where landfall? Yeah, so right now, I mean, you can see, uh, I think the track is here behind us right now. And so um, uh, just to describe a little bit about the track and, and what you're seeing on the map, because people see these maps all the time. The cone that you see there uh, is not an impact cone. It is not uh, anything but other just saying that 66% of the time the storm travels in that area. So right now, the best forecast looking at all the current modeling uh, shows it with landfall in southeastern Louisiana as we approach Monday morning. Uh, the likelihood of it being outside there is much smaller. It falls into that 33% category. So I would say from everything that I've seen with the modeling and as we're seeing things develop today, um, it is unlikely that it will move outside of that. But the one thing that I want to reiterate is that is not, again, the impact cone. Impacts happen outside that. And a lot of times people look at those maps and they, and they get fixated on the center line and the cone and thinking nothing happens outside of there. Uh, there will be plenty of, uh, plenty of heavy rain, uh, gusty winds, uh, the coastal flooding, the storm surge will happen outside of that um, cone area. So I just wanted to reiterate that as well on, on top of the original question. Let's, let's talk about just like, have we ever seen anything like this for two storms of barrier towards the same area, one after the other? And so when you like, how unprecedented is this when you walk on the bottom? Sure. So there's been uh, a couple multiple times where there's been uh, multiple storms in the Gulf at the same time, but uh, that has not happened since the 50s. And uh, usually when that occurs, you have one, like the last example uh, was one uh, impacting the South Texas coast and one impacting Florida moving in different directions. Obviously, one moving inland into Texas, one moving inland to Florida. So the, the unprecedented kind of thing here is that it's the same state within 48 hours of each other. Um, not just that they're in, both in the Gulf of Mexico at the same time. So at least in m modern meteorological history where we've had satellites and able to track this and go back and look at the history, uh, there's never been anything we've seen like this before where you could have possibly two hurricanes um, hitting within uh, miles of each other over, over a 48 hour period. All right, any other questions? Okay, if there's, if there's no other questions, I again want to thank all of you for covering this event. I'm encouraging the people of Louisiana to obviously take this very seriously. Uh, if you haven't prepared, it's not too late, but you've got to do it now. Um, and, and between now and, and dark tonight, 
uh, put yourself and your family in the position that you want to be in, that you need to be in, uh, and, and assume that, that you've got 72 hours or so uh, that, that you're going to have to maintain that position. Uh, again, we will have another pros uh, press conference later today, approximately 6 p.m., uh, with the latest updates regarding the weather and any other preparations uh, we're making across Louisiana and any other uh, guidance that we have uh, for our citizens. And as always, uh, I ask people not just to work to better prepare themselves for this storm, but also uh, to make sure that you, you lift up uh, the state and its people in your prayers uh, and that we will be spared uh, the worst of, of what we have been led to believe is, is possible. So thank you all very much, and we'll see you at 6 o'clock tonight.